really follow uh, peering, what peering actually is? What, what's the object well, there? The peering is a, a vehicle for exchanging traffic between two carriers that primarily have uh, IP-based customers uh, who um, necessarily feel that um, the services offered by an IP-enabled service like VoIP peering is beneficial for their particular use. So um, when two companies peer, they actually exchange ca traffic that originates IP uh, so that it continues along IP to the destination carrier. Okay, so there's no question without peering or interconnection is the way we probably used to describe it in the, in the old days. No calls get through, SMS messages get sent that aren't received. That's the kind of scale of the issue we're talking about. Right, and, and, and primarily peering is very attractive to companies with IP endpoints. Uh, because it's uh, ineffective to make that traffic TDM, which is what the legacy PSTN is uh, mostly comprised of. Um, in Verizon's situation, we have primarily a TDM-based uh, customer uh, uh, base that, that you know, uh, necessarily uh, needs to be converted to IP if we were to exchange traffic via IP. And the economics and the business model, as well as the standards, are still evolving uh, for a traditional base carrier like Verizon to be able to um, introduce and participate in that type of peering on a grand and broad scale. Mm -hmm. So there are different aspects of peering versus IP interconnection that are currently being addressed by various standards organizations um, and sufficient uh, business models have yet to be identified which is why um, Verizon participates at various conferences where peering is discussed. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason this should be important to just about anybody who ever speaks on a phone, whether that's landline or mobile, or sends a text message, is that laundering traffic, even when both end devices are IP, through something in the middle causes what? Well, it's called, um, uh, one of the objectives is transcoder-free operation. and. Um, some of the other benefits of, of keeping traffic all IP all the way um, include certain services that require traffic to remain IP as well as the quality of traffic. Um, when you have transcoder free um, transmission, which means you don't have to um, you know, change the format of the call, you essentially retain and improve the quality as if the call was you know, uh, resident on its initial technology which, which launched that call or initiated that call. So that's, that's the goal, it's quality. Um, its uh, performance and as well as uh, the ability to seamlessly uh, you know, offer services across networks if they remain IP. Now I'm guessing that is, uh, is the case with most things in telecom. The big hang up here is really not the technology standards. We could figure those out. It's really the commercial arrangements between carriers and between trading partners that are causing perhaps a bit of a delay in, in a uh, uh, phenomena that a lot of us thought would be really roaring by about this time. Yeah, well, that's a difference between um, IP inter-networking, which focuses on the technology, and, and there are standards that yet to, to be um, completed, including there are different variations of the SIP um, standard. Um, but beyond inter-networking, which is technology, to achieve interconnection, as you had just indicated, there are a lot of business considerations and um, service considerations because Interconnection should be ubiquitous and available um, to the broad majority of carriers, whereas peering today, as you can see with the GSMA, as well as with the Cable Labs uh, initiative, um, those are consortiums or federations that are, have a common interest and who can, because they're a smaller subset of the larger industry, agree to specific terms and conditions. Now, um, that might be suitable given that they, they are in a position to be able to develop those um, constructs. However, um, you know, with a company like Verizon and AT&T and Quest with majority of TDM endpoints, sometimes the economics and, and the business drivers aren't necessarily there because we have an infrastructure, but certainly we are interested in and are pursuing those standards activities and trying to understand um, how Verizon, when an opportunity presents itself, could participate in that similar market as, as others are doing with peering. Mm -hmm. So if I had to give the sort of completely oversimplified view here, uh, Peering, as it's currently being practiced around the world and in the U.S. market, is really advantageous to small, specific end-user communities, uh, and it may, in fact, not be commercially so attractive to the larger carriers who operate globally and have bilateral agreements with each other. Not, not necessarily yet. Um, simply because uh, we are TDM-based primarily, and um, the uh, 
the, the forces that make it valuable to peer with, um, as over the top carriers are doing with the VPF, um, all of their traffic's IP, and that is their vehicle for interconnecting. So um, they necessarily need to peer to conduct business. Mm -hmm. and, and Verizon already has um, TDM based interconnection, which could be called peering. And the same economies and drivers don't exist yet um, for Verizon as it does for those new entrants who are very successful and, and are operating in a very exciting space. And that's why Verizon is participating to understand when the opportunity uh, presents itself that we would be able to participate as well. Great. Thanks, Jim, and thanks for watching. Thank you, Gary.